trying really hard to be competitive in one of the toughest market segments, the sports sedan segment. So we grabbed the new CTS Coupe and put it against its closest competitor, the BMW 335iS and the Audi S5. Well, these cars look similar on paper, but how close are they in the real world? This is the Cadillac CTS Coupe. If the Germans offer it, Cadillac wants to give you an option, and the CTS Coupe is filling a void. Lots of people ask us, are American cars okay to buy? From a price perspective, as well as performance and premium features, this car competes all day long against its German competitors. It's that attitude you like about a muscle car, but a little bit more refined, a little bit more luxurious, a little more grown up. This car has a lot more flair than its German competitors. Cadillac has been banging away at this art and science design thing for a while now, and it really works. And the art and science design is essentially hand a guy a ruler and say good luck. The circular fuel filter cap looks very out of place. There's pointy bits everywhere. It's almost like the designers were inspired by a prison shiv. The overall proportions are fantastic. This car is gorgeous. It's got huge wide rear fenders to accommodate a wider track, and the car looks like it's crouching forward. Check out the headlights and the taillights. The edges are not flush with the sheet metal. The center taillight actually doubles as the rear fin. That's pretty cool thinking. And no other car looks like this one from the back. It's like they modeled the styling after an iron, pointy and angry at the front and enormous and blocky at the tail. And this grill seems like one of the ways that Cadillac is trying to compete with Audi, as if the knight with the largest shield wins. You can definitely tell the German cars are far more buttoned down in their styling and in the material choices, they're a lot more conservative than the Cadillac is. GM has been behind on its interiors for quite some time, but it's nice to see that the materials in the CTS are really pretty pleasing. In a lot of places, they're better than the BMW. The dash is a nice soft touch leather. The nav screen pops up kind of similar to an Audi A8 actually, and they've done a really good job of thinking about how you'll use it. It's only when you have full nav screen needs that it pops up all the way. Now it's not without faults. The interior door switches are the exact same ones off the Corvette. Some of the plastics feel cheap and it's let down by the seats. They're not quite as bad as the seats in the Camaro, but are Americans really this fat? Do we really have to make these seats so wide so our back fat fits? It took me a while to find a comfortable seating position in this car, but the legroom is great. Now, because the styling is so cool, that means your headroom is gonna be compromised. Don't get me wrong, it's better than most, but it's not great. When I get into the CTS, and I think I'm gonna take it for a fun drive, I don't bring the expectations I would when I'm driving a real sports car. But definitely you're getting away from that terrible floaty Cadillac ride. This has the ride of a good luxury sports sedan. But there's no question you can hustle this car and it feels fun. But this is a big car. It's almost 4,000 pounds. Some cars feel light on their feet the faster you go, but in the CTS, you feel every single pound. But you get it up here on a mountain road, throw it around a bit, that's actually pretty inspiring. The initial turn-in is pretty sharp, and the driving feel is good, but as soon as you really start hustling this car, things can get a little scary. Drive it at about 7 tenths, and it's really good. Power steering is electric, and so it's pretty low on information. You have to learn how to wrestle it, and it takes some wrestle. You've got to plant it just right in the corner and ease your way on the power so you don't overwhelm the tires and get understeer right away. The engine is strong. It's got 300 horsepower. But again, did I mention the car weighs 4,000 pounds? If you want a rocket ship, you have to get the CTS-V, but you also have to spend a whole lot more money. This isn't a slow car. It just doesn't have mind-blowing power like you might expect. This V6 redlines at 6,500, and it's only the last couple thousand RPMs that you really feel a good amount of power. Thankfully, this shiftable automatic gearbox is decent. It's got little buttons behind the steering wheel, and it's not a dual-clutch transmission, but it's faster than you think it is. This car is also available in a six-speed manual, and of course, I'd prefer that. But as automatic transmissions go, this is pretty good. The brakes are good, too. I find the brakes in the CTS to be more than adequate when you really dive into them. But again, the car could be a lot lighter. I think the CTS should be much more deliberate. Does it want to be luxury? Does it want to be sport? Trying to do everything well is difficult. 
I wish the CTS was 500 pounds lighter and the steering was more organic, but that's me being picky. For this market segment, it's amazing how well this car competes. And to answer the question of, are American cars good? Absolutely yes. Especially this one. It's not a full-on sports car. I really like this thing. I could actually see myself owning this car. And here I am, a German car snob. The CTS is really a luxury muscle car. It's not quite as sharp and refined as a smaller car. But you don't buy this because you want a small car. You buy this because you want some attitude and you want some luxury. Tough. That is an amazingly close three cars. It's it's really close. 